Are you worried about pollen, mold, etc.? I want you to try this. If you're feeling itchy, sneezy, or dripping, you're not alone. According to the CDC's National Health Interview Survey, over one quarter of U.S. adults, actually 25.7%, and nearly one in five U.S. children, actually 19%, suffer from seasonal allergies. So today I want to talk about the root cause, debunk some remedy myths, and share some tips for feeling a bit better in between the seasons. Now, seasonal allergies mean what they mean. They happen in season, but new research shows that pollen seasons start 20 days earlier, are 10 days longer, and feature 21% more pollen than in 1990. I'll give you one guess why. It's called climate change. Now, pollen has been around since the beginning of time. Why are allergies seeming increasing all the time? I have spent the last few books trying to show that the reason that these things happen is that our immune system, because of poor gut health, because of leaky gut, because of a bad dysbiotic microbiome, is always on hyper alert. And that it's this hyper alertness that makes our immune system basically overreact to these pollens and molds which have been with us basically since the beginning of time. I'll give you one personal example. We know that when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, every kid took a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to school. Every kid had peanuts at the ballpark. Every airline passed out peanuts and nobody was having a peanut reaction, even though 95% of us are born with an antibody to the peanut lectin. Now, of course, if some well-meaning kid brings a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to school, three kids break out their EpiPens, and if they dare pass out a peanut on an airplane, they don't, and the EpiPens would come out. What happened? Well, again, our immune system is hyperactivated and will go after just about anything. Personally, when I was young, I had to take allergy shots. I had allergies to everything, grass, pollen, you name it. If I was allergic to it, I was allergic to it. And I had to have to take allergy shots. I used to have terrible hay fever. I haven't had hay fever in over 25 years. Why? because I retrained my immune system. And all you gotta do is follow the yes and no lists in any of my books or online at drgundry.com and watch what happens. Now, let's take a look at this article by Healthline titled 15 Home Remedies for Allergies. Because after all, you're not gonna turn your allergies around today. So let's go down the list. How about saline nasal irrigation? Well a 2012 review of 10 studies showed that saline nasal irrigation had beneficial effects in both children and adults for allergic rhinitis, which is often referred to as hay fever. Now, so that's basically a neti pot. And remember, it's actually salt water, not water that you want to use in saline irrigation. Air filters. I'm a huge fan of high efficiency particulate air filters, the HEPA filter or the ultra HEPA filter. By trapping airborne irritants such as pollen, dust, and pet dander, HEPA filters reduce allergens in your home. I'm a big fan of Air Doctor. In fact, I'm such a big fan that I had Peter Spiegel, the creator of Air Doctor, on my podcast. Air conditioners and dehumidifiers help by removing moisture from the air, air conditioners and dehumidifiers can limit the growth of mildew and mold. That can negatively impact allergy. Now, a fun trick to try is butter burr. In a 2003 review, butter burr was found to be equally effective for itchy eyes as a commonly used oral antihistamine. Another good one is bromelain. Bromelain is an enzyme found in papaya and pineapple. 
Now, natural healers consider bromelain to be effective at improving breathing by reducing swelling, and it's well worth a try. Acupuncture, a 2015 review of 13 studies concluded that acupuncture demonstrated positive results for both seasonal and perennial allergic rhinitis. Probiotics, a 2015 review of 23 studies indicated that probiotics may help improve symptoms of allergic rhinitis. You can probably guess why. Because probiotics taken properly and with the right amount will help change your gut microbiome to make more gut buddies and less of the bad guys. And that explains why it would help allergic rhinitis. Now, honey, while there's actually no scientific evidence to prove it, a popular theory suggests eating locally produced honey is a good idea. According to the theory, which I kind of like, you will lower your allergic reaction over time to the pollen that the bees collect in your area to make your honey. And that may be a really good reason, if you're going to eat honey, to use honey from bees in your area. It's not gonna hurt you, but go easy on the honey. Honey is still sugar. It's mostly pure fructose, but there's probably better ways to treat your allergies. Now, spirulina. You've heard me talk about spirulina. Spirulina is a blue-green algae. In fact, a 2015 study indicated that dietary spirulina demonstrated anti-allergenic protective effects towards allergic rhinitis. In fact, I have multiple episodes with Katherine Arnston, the CEO of Energy Bits, right here on this channel. Stinging nettle. Now, natural healing practitioners suggest stinging nettle is a natural antihistamine to help with allergy treatments. And in fact, there are numerous natural antihistamines. One of my favorites is quercetin, sometimes pronounced quercetin. It's a natural compound that's present in apples, cauliflower, green tea, and in the white pith of citrus. And I use it in my patients, my allergic patients, and it works better than commercial antihistamine compounds. I mentioned on a previous podcast that rosmarinic acid is present in mint, it's present in basil, it's present in rosemary. And rosmarinic acid has very potent antihistamine properties. So well worth adding to your regimen. Vitamin C. Vitamin C, make sure it's timed release. Unfortunately, vitamin C is water soluble and we lose, excrete most of our vitamin C in two to four hours after we ingest it. So yes, vitamin C is useful, but get the timed release variety. Now, peppermint essential oil. Peppermint is part of the basil and mint family, which is loaded with rosmarinic acid. A 1998 study, that was a while ago, showed that peppermint oil treatment had enough anti-inflammatory effects that reduced the symptoms of bronchial asthma and allergic rhinitis to warrant clinical trials. Now, essential oils can be diffused into the air, but they should be diluted in a carrier oil if you apply them topically. Same with eucalyptus essential oil. Eucalyptus can be an antimicrobial agent. And one fun thing to do is adding a little bit of it to each load of wash during allergy season. Frankincense essential oil. Now, based on the results of a 2016 study, frankincense oil may help against perennial allergic rhinitis. You can dilute it in a carrier oil or use it behind your ears or use inhalation by diffusing it into the air. Now, I have some other recommendations. I use perilla oil in my patients to reduce the amount of bacterial cell walls called LPSs going across the wall of the gut. Perilla oil has been shown to change the gut microbiome to a more healthy gut buddy microbiome and to suppress the bad guys. Pearl oil is the most widely used oil in Korea. 
and it's easy to obtain organic perilla oil online. Okra. Okra is a natural lectin blocker. It absorbs lectins. And as anyone who's listened to me, lectins are one of the ways of producing leaky gut. And anything you can do to block lectins before they get to you is helpful. So okra is right up there on great things to use, eat, swallow, during allergy season. Also, sea buckthorn. You may see that sea buckthorn comes up on several lists. Sea buckthorn is a very interesting omega-7 that may have really great anti-inflammatory properties. It has some real utility in cardiovascular disease prevention, and sea buckthorn is well worth trying as an additional adjunct benefit. Also, yarrow has been shown to have anti-allergic properties, and yarrow is readily available as a supplement. It's getting worse for two reasons. Number one, our seasons are longer, but number two, our immune system is hyperactivated, and things that wouldn't have even mattered to our great-great-grandparents now we're taking a toll on almost every one of us because of leaky gut and gut dysbiosis. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Now, fructose is unfortunately a real mischief maker in suppressing mitochondrial function. And fructose is hiding everywhere. 